Hi, I'm Ronald Hansen, and I'm excited to tell you about an experiment we did in the summer of 2015 here in Delft that showed a loophole-free bell inequality violation. What we did in this experiment is to take two electron spins separated by a large distance, entangle them, and then run a bell test on them. And what was special about this bell test is that all the experimental loopholes were closed for the very first time. Now, there are two main experimental loopholes that we addressed. The first loophole is the communication loophole, which has to do with information being sent from Alice to Bob or Bob to Alice during the test. And the other loophole is the detection loophole, which deals with the cases where sometimes Alice or Bob does not produce an answer. The electron spins that we use are trapped inside a very tiny piece of diamond. And this very tiny piece of diamond is mounted on a chip like this. And it has electrical wires so that, so that we can control the spin state of the electron. Uh, and it is mounted in an optical cryostat that basically means a fridge. And with the fridge we can cool down these little tiny pieces of diamond to minus 270 degrees Celsius. So here you see one of these fridges that contain such a diamond chip which is cooled to such low temperatures. Additionally, besides the fridge, you see mirrors and all these optical elements and they are there to guide the laser light towards the electron spin so that we can see what its state is. And all this stuff on the table here has been assembled by brilliant PhD students such as this guy over here. By cooling our diamond chip and by using these precise laser excitations, we are sure that every time we read out the electron, we will get an answer. So the detection loophole is firmly closed. But what about the other loophole, the communication loophole? Well, it takes us about three and a half microseconds to complete the readout of the electron. And during that time, there should be no communication between the two sides. Three and a half microseconds means about one kilometer for any signal traveling at light speed. So what we had to do was to separate our setups by more than a kilometer. And this is what we did. We are currently in the building right here on this picture. The other lab is all the way here on the other side of the campus, 1.3 kilometers away. And by having this large distance, we are 100% sure that during the bell test, there is no way that the two electron spins on the two sides could communicate with each other. The communication loophole is closed. But now the big challenge is, how do we create entanglement between these two electron spins that are so far away? Of course, there's no direct physical interaction that is of any significance at this distance. So what we had to do is to use a mediator to create the entanglement. And in fact, the mediator that we use are single photons, single particles of light. In each round of the experiment, each uh, electron spin in the diamond is emitting one photon and the photon is traveling along this yellow line in fibers and ends up here. At the same time a photon comes from the other side also ends up here. And at the placement of this eye here the two photons are measured simultaneously. And if that measurement has the right outcome it will immediately entangle the electron here with the electron here. Moreover, this signal here that says, yes, I made the right measurements on the photons, tells us that the setup is ready. We can now run a bell trial, one trial of the bell test. And because this signal is heralded, as we say, it gives a signal when things have succeeded, we can actually disregard all the trials in which we did not make entanglement. And there are many of such trials, many, many of these trials I uh, have a case where a photon either gets diverted into the cable, or gets lost, or is not detected at the beam splitting. So, we had to do a lot of stuff. We had to separate our diamonds by more than a kilometer. We had to build this state-of-the-art setup, but in the end we've achieved our goal. We've done a loop of free test of Bell's inequality. And indeed, we found the inequality is violated. <laughs>